All right, so I think we'll get started. Um, so hi, I'm Fabian. I'm from the Mobile Systems Research Group at MIT. And today I'm just going to talk about some of our work that related to mapping, which I think is, might be useful for OpenStreetMap. And you're going to see actually a lot of similarities with the last two sessions, more than I expected uh, before, <laughs> before like, listening to them. Um, so yeah, the basic premise is we want to improve coverage of roadmaps. So as I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, OpenStreetMap and other streetmap data sets have pretty good coverage in a lot of countries and most urban areas. But in some countries, in rural areas, uh, they're really lacking in coverage. So this is a particularly extreme example in Indonesia where the bottom left, so I don't know if you can see actually in this image, but the bottom left has some black lines that are kind of left, uh, mapped, but most of this region, it just has no mapped roads. And there's like several villages here that are all pretty far from the mapped road network. And so to try to solve this, there's been a lot of research trying to build these systems that analyze data sources like satellite imagery and GPS trajectories to try to automatically find where, to, where we should put the streets. Uh, but they haven't really gained traction in practical mapping communities. So within the last two, one or two years, we've seen some developments with OpenStreetMap, like the Facebook's AI-assisted mapping, and I think there's been a couple others as well. But it's still not like, it hasn't been adopted in a widespread kind of fashion. And I think there's three main reasons for this, which again, it's sort of, I think this has been mentioned earlier too. So the biggest problem is the error rates right now. They're still too high for a fully automated approach. If your error rates are like 5%, then you can't just go and take all of your streets that were automatically identified by, say, a machine learning model and just incorporate those into the map because you're going to degrade the quality of the original base map, which probably has accuracy higher than 95%. Um, so I think that's actually the most important problem. The second one is, it's more minor. It's just most of the research hasn't looked at, uh, it, they've, they've been focusing on how to infer a completely new road network from scratch and not so much on how to connect those new roads with the existing road network. Uh, but, but I think that's a problem that we can solve today. Um, the third issue is another one that I think is kind of important. It's just that people haven't really looked too much at how we can take data that is like coming out of things like machine learning models and algorithms that are maybe analyzing GPS trajectories and integrate those into the existing map editing process. So uh, like in the research community, you usually like develop a pipeline where you produce some output and you evaluate that output. But I think there's a lot to be done on the side where humans actually interact with these tools. So sort of the human computer interaction or the user interfaces. So how do we design user interfaces that will make it efficient to use machine learning and actually improve maps with them? So that's where this machine-assisted map editing sort of comes in. So the basic premise is, again, that the error rates of the algorithms that we have today are too high for full automation. So we need some kind of semi-automated approach where humans actually validate these inferred segments before incorporating them into the map. The problem, though, is that this is actually kind of challenging. It, it's challenging um, to figure out how to actually do this efficiently. Or, oh, okay, the video's working. All right, let me just stop it first. So this is a prototype that we built at the very beginning. So we were focusing mainly on streets in our work. And also, uh, one thing I should mention is today I'm just going to focus on the geometry of the streets, but I think what I say might apply to tagging the streets as well. Uh, in our prototype, basically, we just did the most straightforward thing. So this was using a machine learning model that's looking at the satellite imagery. And basically, we would just the user could input a region that they want to look at. We would run the machine learning model in that region, and then our system would produce this yellow overlay containing the vector roads detected by the machine learning model. And from here, the user can interact with this layer to actually add the roads into the map. So basically, they just left, left click on one of these yellow segments to add it to the map. Uh, again, currently, uh, it's not looking at tagging. So it's just uh, doing the geometry. Um, and then if there's a road that's incorrect, they can, if it's like a little bit incorrect, then they can add it first and then use the existing uh, uh, features in ID to adjust the geometry. But if it's completely incorrect, they can also right-click it to just remove it. 
And in some places, it's kind of hard to see the road when you have a yellow overlay on top of it. So one other feature that we added was you can press a button on the keyboard if you want to hide the yellow overlay so that you can look at the imagery without anything on top of it. But what we found, we did some like uh, study, not with OpenStreetMap mappers, but uh, mostly like st students. And we had them use this tool and use the, tr and also had them try to trace roads manually using the existing kind of ID interface where you add, you, like you add lines manually by repeated clicks. And we found that this didn't actually improve the mapping speed too much. We got maybe a 1.1x improvement. And the reason was that these, in regions like this where the roads are just really close together and you have a lot of short, straight roads, it's just not that much faster. So this is exactly what Drew was saying, I think, earlier. Uh, it's just not that much faster to validate the roads than to just trace them from scratch. So you might as well trace them from scratch. Um, and to us, this was actually kind of exciting because that means that there's something interesting that we might be able to do to actually create a better user interface that might uh, improve speed because the most straightforward thing isn't working. All right, so to summarize that part, yeah, so uh, we need some validation by humans because of the high error rates in road segments output by these automated solutions. But if you do the most straightforward thing, tracing is actually just as fast, or almost as fast at least, as validating the segments. So we tried several things, and in the end, we found that the most useful approach was to focus on tasks where machine assistance could provide the biggest benefit. So this is like specific types of tasks. And the two types that we looked at were, well, the first one was looking at regions that have very low or even no coverage. So that's like the Indonesia example I showed at the very beginning, where you have a large region where there's just nothing in the map, no roads, no buildings, et cetera. In those regions, I think, so, so I'm, I don't have too much experience with like uh, the general OpenStreetMap process, but I think it would be most useful at the beginning to just capture the major arterial roads in these completely unmapped areas. Uh, just as a starting point. Like ideally, you would have that sort of last mile connectivity to the final destination and capturing all of the small residential roads to get to the, uh, like, like the house that you want to go to. But if you have the major roads, at least you can get like sort of close and then from there maybe you can ask for directions or something. Uh, so we found that because these major roads are long, that that's the main reason. So because they're long, it actually takes a while to make all these clicks to add the road if you're doing it with manual tracing, which means that validation actually sort of is more promising in this problem. So we sort of designed a, uh, well, um, let me just start the video first. Oh, that didn't work at all, okay. Um, I think I wanna mirror my screen or something. Okay, so yeah, it's a bit smaller now, so you might not be able to see it, but um, Okay. Anyway, the, the basic idea is we designed some pruning system so that we would take the output from the machine learning model and get rid of the short minor roads that might actually be faster to trace by hand than to validate. And what we're left with is the roads that our system thinks are sort of these major arterial roads. So I'm talking like primary, secondary, tertiary roads. And, um, yeah, so when, once the user is left with these roads, we sort of focus the user on mapping these longer roads. And we found that when we focus the user in this way, the user actually, uh, it, it actually does improve mapping speed by maybe two or three X. All right, this video is just not working, but um, 
yeah, I mean, I think you get the basic idea. So, so we're pruning the short roads, the user's just left with the long roads, and then they do the same interface that I showed the, with the video that was working, where they're interacting with the yellow overlay to add the remaining roads. And so uh, th I guess the difference between those two interfaces primarily is that when you're tracing short straight roads, actually most of the time is spent in your head looking at the imagery and figuring out where the roads are and not the actual clicks. Because if you have a bunch of short straight roads, each road segment might, might just be like two clicks, one to start it and maybe a double click to end it. But, but when you have a longer road, uh, yeah, you just, you just have to have more clicks. And in addition to the speed improvement, we also found that users were less tired after using the validation interface because I think that's primarily because they would just have to click once if the road is correct to add the road instead of having to click several times and trace along the segment. Uh, the other context or t type of task that we looked at was in places where there's already high coverage in the map and you want to further improve the coverage. So just imagine that, so I don't actually know the state of OpenStreetMap in Detroit, but suppose that 99% of the roads in Detroit are in OpenStreetMap, but you are interested in going from 99% to 100%. So you might use something like Task Manager to assign tasks to these grid cells and have people go, go into that cell and look for missing roads. But if you do that, maybe like 90% of the cells don't actually have any improvements that you have to make because the map is already uh, very high coverage. So yeah, I think the video is not gonna work, not gonna work again. Uh, but let me just try it over here. All right, but yeah, basically, I mean, it, it's a pretty s simple solution. So we said that, okay, instead of requiring the user to pan around the imagery, slowly looking for unmapped roads, we have these roads output by our machine learning model. So why don't we just uh, find groups of roads that seem to be missing from OpenStreetMap and just add this jump button. So, th so this button, oh, sorry, I didn't realize I can't. Uh, so yeah, just. Uh, so, so there's like this jump button in the interface that users can click on to, uh, it's like right next to the line button. Um, you, if users click on that, it'll take them to a group of unmapped roads. Uh, so it's pretty simple. And we found that users were really happy with that when we tried asking them to map this region of rural Washington state where for the most part the roads were there, but there were some logging roads that were missing that some people are interested in. and. Yeah, this way they just didn't have to spend that time panning around the imagery looking for missing roads. All right, so in summary, editing maps manually is pretty tedious. And to try to solve this, there have been a lot of work on fully automated systems to just go from data sources directly to vector road data. But the problem with these systems is their high error rates. So a fully automated solution isn't actually possible today, maybe in the future, but not today. And so I believe that machine-assisted editing where the machine is helping the, the actual user can substantially improve productivity with the systems that we have now. And we found in our initial prototype that because most roads are short and straight, if we don't add anything on top of like the straightforward approach, then we're not actually going to improve mapping productivity. But once we start focusing on and thinking about particular tasks where we can get the, get the most benefit, then we start seeing some improvements. So we looked at regions with low coverage where we focus on major roads and regions with high coverage where we add this teleport functionality that pans a user directly to a group of candidate missing roads. Uh, we want to release an initial version soon of this system that we built. But right now we're sort of waiting on the licensing. Uh, but once the licensing goes through, I'm gonna to try to, um, so I've been talking with Digital Globe a little bit, they've been a bit slow, so I think I'm gonna reach out to Bing to see if they'd be more willing to sort of give us a uh, license to use this imagery uh, only for contributing back to OSM, uh, but being able to apply the machine learning approaches as well, because the existing OSM license doesn't cover um, like offline analytics on the imagery. And I also think it'd be really interesting if, or really cool if we, if OpenStreetMap is able to get a broad license for performing these kinds of offline data and analytics tasks that contribute back to OpenStreetMap. Because right now I think the machine learning part is sort of anyone 
who, who like has, has worked with machine learning can sort of do that. But to get access to imagery, it's just really expensive. You have to purchase the imagery and um, go through that whole process. But if there's a, like a license in place, then I think that would kind of democratize this uh, application of machine learning and other algorithmic methods on automatically identifying streets. So that's all I have. Uh, I think I'm a bit short because the videos, I wasn't able to show you some of the videos, but yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, yeah, so um, we, we sort of have two pipelines in place. One of them is what more, more similar to what most people use and one of them is a bit different. So the one that's more similar is essentially, um, are you more interested in the specific machine learning method or maybe the overall pipeline of how this might look like, like fetching the imagery and running the model? Okay, yeah, so yeah, the first simpler or more common method is just uh, essentially we train a convolutional neural network to input the satellite imagery and label every pixel in the imagery as either road or non-road. So this is the segmentation task where we want to yeah, classify every pixel as road or non-road. And the output is actually not like the vector road network that we really want in the end to be able to actually merge back into OpenStreetMap. It's really this sort of image. Uh, we're going to have a probability for each pixel of whether or not that pixel is a road. And we're sort of left with this jigsaw puzzle of figuring out how to connect these pixels together to get vector road data. Um, but to do that, there's some existing methods. So uh, what we do is a pretty, um, a pretty common approach. So you take your mask with these probabilities, uh, you threshold it. So if it's above, say, 50% probability, then you just say it's a road. If not, then you say it's not a road. Uh, at that point, you have a binary image where every pixel is either true or false, true being a road. Then you sort of do some blurring to expand the foreground section of the image, and then uh, basically you then thin the lines. So you might get like, yeah, thick 10 pixel wide lines. You thin those to one pixel wide lines, and then that is essentially your vector data. Once you have the vector data, there's a little bit more work to actually merge this with, um, your, if you have an existing map. So you might have to, uh, I mean, you're gonna have to take vector data from your existing map and you know, make sure that the new roads aren't duplicates of those. And then if they are duplicates, you're also going to have to connect the rest of your new roads with the existing network. So, so there's some additional post-processing steps there. Um, but yeah, that's the more common method. We also developed a sort of different approach to this problem that doesn't rely on segmenting the imagery. Uh, so what that approach does is it's more like instead of labeling each pixel with the direction, oh, sorry, with the whether or not it's a road, we label each pixel with the direction of roads at that pixel. So if you have a north-south road, then the label at every uh, pixel in the image along that north-south road will say like north-south basically. Um, and then from there, instead of doing this uh, kind of image processing task to extract vector data, you sort of get vector data directly from that directional information. So we can connect together points along this north-south ro ro uh, road by following that directional information to extract a road network. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the high level, at high level, those two approaches. <laughs> 